Hi, I'm actor Ian Champion, and welcome to The History of Horror Cinema, a personal podcast journey through the good, bad, and ugly of the history of horror movies, based on my blog, The History of Horror Cinema. Oh, and please don't forget to hit subscribe. The Laurel and Hardy Murder Case, 1930 Together, Stan and Ollie's personas as the Fiddle and the Bow, as they were gracefully nicknamed, would dovetail beautifully on screen. Ollie's slow-burn reactions to camera gave the audience time to laugh and to share in his incredulity at his partner's dim-wittedness. Stan could simply sit and do almost nothing, yet be as fascinating as a cat when not fiddling idly with something to occupy his two-watt brain, ideas processed in that cavernous space before coming out in a stream that makes sense initially, but unravels like wool the more they are examined. If ever they seem to be in opposition, for every devious plan that Ollie constructs to secretly benefit himself, Stan will assuredly wreck it like a one-man cyclone of unwitting destruction. As actors, they were as harmonious in their division of labor off-screen as they were in front of the camera. Stan was obsessed with gag construction and timing, working long hours as very much a filmmaker, whereas Oliver was happy to be a talented co-worker spending his free time on the golf course. Stan was known to mischievously save up Oliver's reaction shots to the end of the day, so he'd be that little bit more frustrated to get on the green. To Oliver, Stanley's greater share of the earnings in their joint contract with studio head Hal Roach was entirely fitting. His friend did more of the work. As we've already said, their wonderful short subject plots could be based around any single idea. One of their best ideas was to play on the concept of hen-pecked husbands forever trying to hide innocent free time activities from their tyrannical and suspicious wives. Their most memorable casting for this was May Bush, who could play the scorned harpy to perfection, giving genuine chills out of fear of her wrath. She had already made great use of a hardened streetwise gal image in horror feature films such as The Unholy Three with Lon Chaney, and would go on to appear in Doctor X. In between, she was Laurel and Hardy's favorite battle axe, and her unholy retribution serves as a marvellous bridge connecting their mainstream films with horror possibilities in her later ideal casting in Oliver the Eighth, which we'll come to. But before they could match wits and knives with Bush, the twosome made their version of the now familiar Cat and the Canary plot in the Laurel Hardy murder case. This begins with the boys in their usual hard-up state, fishing none too productively on a dockside, before Ollie sees a newspaper dirty work 1933. In November 1933, Laurel and Hardy released another cracking, mad scientist-themed short directed by Lloyd French and written by H. M. Beanie Walker. In Dirty Work, they play a couple of chimney sweeps hired to work in the home of the highly eccentric Professor Noodle, the hugely memorable Lucian Littlefield, who'd already earned his kooky comedy spurs as the Doctor in 1927's The Cat and the Canary right from the special effect opening credits featuring a bubbling conical flask and tracking into Noodle's desk of complicated experimental paraphernalia, we know we're in the presence of the archetypal Batty Boffin we all know and love. Noodle has the smoking jacket of the gentleman and the perched pince-nez of the scholar, coupled with a tufty, almost bald head and a look of maniacal determination as he stirs the tall, frothing liquid. His long-suffering butler Jessup, Samuel Adams, has spent twenty years hearing him declaim his eternal youth goal with just a few drops of his serum. Noodle's boasting is aptly punctured by a playful cuckoo effect followed by the doorbell. As Stan and Ollie enter and begin to elaborately destroy the house, Noodle delights in his list of nonsensical ingredients to be added. An unfortunate adult duck subject is placed into a bathtub for the final test and with a single serum drop from a teat pipette, the water boils like a jacuzzi, resulting in the duck reverting to a cute little duckling. This causes the good doctor to perform a madcap jig of celebration around the room, a wonderfully bizarre high point of Littlefield's performance. He bursts with such infectious joy that he can barely contain himself in front of the boys in a glorious display of deliriously committed ham. Littlefield's cry of exultation that the greatest scientific breakthrough of the age is mine, all mine, 
is seamlessly followed by his hilariously unselfconscious, insane cock-crowing sound. His triumphant excitement is such that after he leaves the room with the boys in eager pursuit, he can't resist turning back on them to re-enter with a full-throated cackle. Savor the crackling voltage of a madcap actor who can single-handedly pull the focus from both Laurel and Hardy. Our besooted pair are then shown a continuation of the previous experiment, where the poor duck's biomarkers are now further reversed to the form of an egg. With a surprisingly uncharacteristic burst of self-preserving intelligence, Ollie reacts to this with an upbeat, Well, be seeing you! Inevitably, while the professor exits to find his butler, Stan and Ollie get busy with the fizzy, using a heroic dose that reduces poor Ollie to an impossibly retrograde self. A chimp. Dirty work is a fast-paced favorite of many, myself included, and a neat, concentrated injection of inspired medical mayhem.